Good evening and welcome to our second inclusion information evening of the year as part of our commitment of effective and ongoing communication with our parents, carers and communities. At Bexley Heath Academy, we are committed to making sure that um, all students have the support they need to be unusually brave and try new things, discover what's possible in their learning inside the classroom and outside, push the limits of what they feel or they imagined they could achieve and be big hearted, same as the staff who are around them. Bexley Heath Academy is an inclusive school and that is reflected in the students and also in the teachers and the staff members that form part of our school community. And later on, you're going to be hearing from some of our teachers who use their SEND superpowers to um, excel professionally. And you're also going to be hearing a little bit from our students and how they feel um, or how they experience Bexley Heath Academy as an inclusive school. Now to put um, this into our kind of specific school context, um, at Bexley Heath Academy, 19% of our students have a special educational need or disability. And this is higher compared to Bexley Heath Academy, uh, sorry, compared to um, the borough of Bexley, um, where 14% of um, the young people in, in that age group have um, uh, send and um, nationally where we've got 17%. The majority of our students have um, who have um, special educational needs or disabilities have social emotional mental health difficulties and the most prominent diagnoses are autism spectrum disorder and attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Um, in the next few slides, we would like to introduce you to the ever-growing um, inclusion team. I am Miss Elliot Graves, the Assistant Principal and Inclusion Lead, and I am going to be handing over to our um, brilliant Senko, Miss Chikolita, who's going to take you through the next few parts of our presentation. Good evening, I am uh, Ms. Chikulita, I am the Senko. I work closely every day with uh, some of our um, uh, members, team members that I'm going to present next. Um, our SEN administrator, which is Ms. Cookson Edwards, and our um, team of learning uh, support assistants, Ms. Chang, Ms. Driscoll, Ms. Jones, Ms. Kaigusus, Ms. Rebecca, Mr. Struger, and Mr. Turner. I am now going to hand you over to Ms. Kaigusus and Ms. Rebecca, who are going to explain what the LSA team does to support our students. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Ms. Kaigusus, and I'm one of the a learning sports systems and I just want to start with why it is important to be an LSA. Um, I believe that every child deserves a good education that helps all students succeed. One of the primary tasks of a learning sport assistant is to help our students with their education. Our goal is to help each child to achieve and surpass their full potential. Um, LSAs also help in vulnerable children who may find it challenging to learn because of um, their existing hardships such as dyslexia, health issue, a disability or even because they don't speak English as their first language. We also support and encourage children with their schoolwork if they need help or understanding or any instructions or give them confidence in their ability to complete a task. LSAs are usually necessary when children have behaviour problems in managing class behaviour. We provide clear instructions that help children understand, behave appropriately. We require a calm, rational tone when speaking to misbehaving children about what they're doing wrong. LSA is also helping Cray follow an individual's childcare plan to ensure that they get the attention that they need. I've had some great experience with students and supporting them 
through their journey at the secondary school, at their secondary school, um, them to be the best way they can. And of course, other than this, we help teachers prepare school materials, um, managing stu students in class and supervising them in social situations. Thank you for listening. Hello, I'm Miss Rebecca and I'm one of the LSA's uh, Bexley Heath Academy. I just want to give some example of how we support students. Uh, for example, we try to uh, support them in multiple ways inside and outside classrooms. When a student is overwhelmed in classroom, we take them for a walk. And in this conversation, we try to have a conversation with them and uh, make sure that they are feeling good if they are try to find out if they're struggling or if they have any problem with peers or um, regarding their learning. Um, and all, we always make sure that the students are confident in classroom and uh, during a transaction, so between uh, two periods, uh, between two lessons, or uh, during lunch or break. Uh, for example, we provide a space at lunchtime where students can stay and enjoy their lunch. Uh, so it's a space inside where it's safe and they can have a nice time together. In this room, we have fidget toy, we have Play-Doh, Lego, uh, stuff they can use uh, to draw. And um, also we have created an uh, organized and focused session, which is a session planned uh, in the morning, so before lessons start, um, with the aim to engage and provide um, an effective way to help the students to start their day organized and focused. Um, there, is, there are multiple ways where we uh, support students. Um, those were just a few examples. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, um, Miss Kagazuz and Miss Rebecca. Um, I am now going to um, invite um, three students um, who um, have been invited to share um, their the support that they receive in school um, with permission from um, their parents and carers. Hello everybody, my name is Angelo. Hello everybody. Hello everybody, my name is Ivalo. This school helps me a lot. It is a thing, it's called AI, it's on my Chromebook. It helps me a lot and mostly my English teacher helps me a lot, Miss Elliot Graves. And every Friday I go ESOL. It helps me very good. It helps me to read and write. Um, also, it helps me to concentrate in class. But the teachers are very good and I like them. Hello, I'm going to talk to you about phonics. In phonics, we get the support we need to help get up to a level, get up to a new level. And because and be a better version of ourselves. Phonics helps me to feel more confident with my speech and spelling so I can spell, so I can do well in my assessment during the week. In phonics, I get extra support from my English teacher, LSA and six formers. For example, one of the six formers in my classroom reads out the question, therefore I'm able to understand the tasks that I need to complete. I think Bexley Leaf Academy is inclusive because all the members of staff help you with your needs. For example, my teacher my teachers try to support me in the best way they can. In school, I feel supported because all my teachers can understand when I'm struggling. For example, in maths, my teacher helps me a lot with di division. For example, she told me to use pencils and divide them into groups to find the right answer. 
In English, my teacher helps me by making sure that I know what I am doing and if I need another explanation, she will give me the support I needed. Also, I like to sit at the front to make sure I am always focusing in my class. That was amazing and I'm sure you are joining me in feeling so um, proud of the students and um, their fantastic presentations that they've just done for us. Um, we thank you very, very much. I'm now going to invite a couple of our staff members to share um, their experiences of special educational needs and how that is the superpower um, that has helped them in their life. Thank you, Ms. Elliot Graves. Um, so my name is Ms. Kabalka and I'm one of the vice principals here at Bexley Heath Academy. And my particular focus is around teaching and learning and making sure that our lessons are as the highest standard as, as possible for our students. Now, I have ADHD, um, like many of our students here, uh, and I have combined type ADHD, which means that I have a real mix of kind of hyperactivity, but sometimes also inattentive uh, kind of symptoms as, as well. But I don't really see those as, as symptoms. I see them, as Miss Elliot Graves said, as one of my, my superpowers. And the reason for that is, yes, I have a lot of things going through my brain at, at any one time, but it means that I can be really creative and I come up with lots and lots of ideas because I'm constantly thinking of them. Uh, and it means that when I go into different situations, if I'm trying to problem solve and as a, as a challenge I need to overcome, I often think of lots of different ways to be able to overcome that challenge that quite often other people don't can't even think of um, because they're just thinking, kind of one thing at a, at a time. So I really see um, my ADHD as my superpower because it gives me that kind of extra, extra edge. It also means that I feel like I'm really kind of on the ball all the time, uh, thinking about different things. I'm seeing what's going on. Uh, and that's particularly when I feel like a little bit more hyperactive. But it also means that when I'm in the classroom, I can be watching everybody at any given time and I feel like I'm listening to those students, I'm collecting all those information. And even when I was at school, it meant that in those moments where I was really on the ball, I could be listening to my teachers, I could really hyper focus. But I've also learned over the years to think about, OK, well, sometimes when my brain is maybe not thinking uh, as as quickly and I'm having those little bit more moments of inattentiveness and I'm, I start to daydream a little bit. Over the years, I've really learned how to how to manage those and I've come up with lots of strategies and it was teachers at school that really helped me to work out what those strategies might be and students might quite often see me around school I tend to, to to fiddle a little bit so I like to move my fingers that's my way of keeping myself focused when I'm in lessons as, as well uh, to keep on the ball and one thing I really had to work on when I was at school is deadlines and homework so it was so quite sometimes quite challenging I, I had to forget that I needed to do that homework and I had to make sure I was really organized and set myself kind of reminders okay I've got this deadline I have to make sure I get to it because oh, quite often those are the kind of little things that I, I forget but I've learned over the years to really really manage them and I feel like actually it now means I'm really organized as a person because I know I have to make sure that I'm on the ball all the all the time but as a teacher it means that because I really understand ADHD I can share that knowledge with our teachers so we run lots of uh, staff training for example so that staff know exactly what ADHD is we can then share with them exactly how it affects students and how it affects people and, and making sure that actually that's not a barrier in the classroom that all our teachers kind of know those strategies really quickly and we can share that personal experience with them as as well so for me my ADHD really is a, a a superpower just because of all the creative thinking and problem solving skills it, it gives me as well. But if anybody has any questions about ADHD as well, any students, you can always come and speak to me and I'd be more than happy to share kind of different strategies I use um, with you as, as well. Thank you. Over to you, Miss Elliot Graves. Okay, thank you, Miss Kovaka, for that. So now we're going to hear from uh, Miss Letha and her own superpower.
I'm really sorry, Miss Lee, I'm going to have to stop. I think, uh, unfortunately, your sound, we were having a little bit of a, a technical issue with it at this moment in time. Yes, I thought my super power would get through to everybody without any issues, with any technical difficulties. But now I'll, it I'll, is. Okay. Perfect. There we go. So my superpower is that I've got dyslexia and I've got ADHD. And you might be thinking, well, actually, Miss um, kabaka has got ADHD and she's super calm um, all the time. She, she's not running around like a headless chicken like Miss Luther is. And it can come in so many different forms. Uh, and people have different ways um, that ADHD will manifest itself. Um, and I'll talk about me. So one of the things that I have trouble doing, believe it or not, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, um, is organization and planning. So one of the things that I have, and I showed this just earlier, is, is this black book, my moleskin, I really love, rely on it. And on each page, and I'll show you quickly, because I don't want you to be seeing anything on it, is basically a list of everything that I need to do. And I'll always go ahead and write down if it is that I need to email a particular parent or I need to call um, a parent back, I'll write down the name in a little box, because I like to tick off everything that I do by the end of the day. And it makes me feel super successful when I do that. Now, you might realize that sometimes Miss Luther is speaking at a really fast paced. Um, and that's because of my ADHD, that sometimes I find it difficult to slow it down. Um, and I have to remind myself that not everyone is going to understand me at super speed. It's not going to happen. There are some times where I have ADHD rage. And I used to find it really difficult when I was growing up that I would get angry about things really, really quickly. And I'll end up acting on impulse and it might get me into trouble. And some of you that are sat there right now will think, well, actually, miss, you're, you're the one that has that conversation with me when I might make a difficult decision um, and I'm up instead in triage and I'll sit down and spend time with you to go through exactly what it ha what happened and why it happened. And we'll talk through exactly what we can be doing differently. Um, ADHD is absolutely amazing. And sometimes people always ask me, like, why is it that you send emails in the middle of the night? Because sometimes with my ADHD, I find it difficult to, to calm down and get ready for bed and focus on sleep and getting that rest and relaxation that I need. And so the way that I do that is is pretty much occupy myself by sending out emails and doing little tasks at home. Um, and hopefully some of you are nodding your head. You find it difficult to go to bed because there's so many things that are going around in your head. And sometimes I find it really helpful uh, to speak to other people about what my worries are or the big tasks that I need to do. Across the school, what you'll see me doing is walking around the academy. And I do, on average, about 25,000 steps. Because for me, that means that my brain is ticking over, just like Miss um, Kabako had spoken about, that she can focus on so many different things at the same time. And for me, the best way that I think is by moving around quite a lot. Um, and so you'll see me walking around, making decisions, being having uh, my phone out because I'm emailing people at the same time uh, and getting tasks done. Um, and I really do see it as my superpower. And hopefully the discussions that I've had with some of you over the past couple of years since we've met, uh, you really realize that I'm on your side. and I really understand what you're going through. That feeling that sometimes you say things without thinking about it or without having the opportunity to think, well, actually, let me think about what the impact of that message or that uh, that word that I've used. What, what's it going to have on the person that sat in front of me? Um, and talking together about strategies that we can implement in order to make sure that those issues and incidents don't occur. My other superpower is dyslexia. So. I often found, I find it difficult to read. And when I was growing up, it was really difficult reading. And sometimes what, I, that I, what I'd find is that I'd be reading pages of books at a time and then not really remember anything that I've read. And I find myself spending a lot longer than the people around me reading those books. But the only way that I got better at reading is by reading um, and spending time and making sure that I've got the right environment. Because in those environments, uh, all those situations where I need to read lots of large pieces of text, I can't have lots of things going on around me. And I need to be focused on exactly what it is that I'm reading at that point in time to be able to absorb that. Another thing about my superpower, and I'll go step back into ADHD, is I like lots of noise around me in order for me to focus when it comes to doing work. So not reading. Reading, I need to be super, super deadly quiet so I can focus on those words and being able to understand exactly what that paragraph is telling me. But then if I go back to my ADHD, like I like it to be super, super noisy when I'm trying to write an email, create um, plans of how we can improve the school, uh, designing posters that can go around the school, whatever it might be. So I have the TV on in the background. It might be YouTube somewhere in the corner just over here. And it just helps me uh, think a lot clearer. Um, so I do like that noise. And I can't wait to hear about your superpowers when we come back to school tomorrow. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Luther and Ms. Kravecka, and for continuing to inspire us um, to think inclusively every day um, in the school. Um, so, what I'm now going to move um, on to is to just um, explain and walk you through our um, graduated approach to identifying and supporting special educational needs um, in the school. So um, some students uh, may already have a special educational need identified in primary school, or that might be something that emerges or that we pick up on um, whilst they're here from year seven all the way um, to the end of their sixth form. Um, the process of doing that involves communication with parents, communications with our staff, with our teachers, with the students themselves and with our pastoral team to pick up on what their experience of the school environment is and of the lessons. By doing things such as collecting all of the views of the teachers through round robins or communicating um, with parents holding phone conversations or um, uh, meetings or even by picking up on the information that parents and carers provide us through our sent inquiries form, we are able to identify um, the, uh, uh, an emerging or um, historic special educational need that we then begin to um, approach and support. Now, our quality first teaching is robust and it is modelled on the Bexley toolkit and the majority of students will be most effectively supported through the quality first teaching strategies that their expert trained teachers are going to be providing them. And Ms Chikolita is going to go through those in a little bit more detail throughout the presentation, looking at specific types of needs, specific quality first teaching. But at this point, I just wanted to say that the quality first teaching strategies that we use, all of our teachers are trained in and they are trained in this regularly. It forms part of their planning for their classrooms, their classroom environment, their scheme of work, their learning um, plans and also the individual lessons that they're going to plan and deliver. We quality assure these and we are um, constantly working with the teachers, training using CPD to ensure that our information, our feedback, our knowledge of special educational needs feeds into the, the teaching and the quality first teaching strategies. However, some students will require some targeted additional interventions to help them, to help support them, overcome some specific um, um, difficulties that they may have, or to promote progress and support a particular area of development. Ms Chikolita again is going to go through our increased um, additional um, targeted interventions and explain some of the new ones that um, we have started this term and how they work. There are times where with good quality first teaching and good targeted interventions, we may be seeing some progress in um, the, the social and educational pro uh, outcomes of the students. But we, we, we may also identify that there's still additional support needed. This is where we begin to realise that um, a student may need specialist support, which is additional and highly personalised intervention. At that point, we are able to discuss these students, the support that we've already offered and the impact that has had with our early intervention team, which involves professionals from the borough, such as educational psychologists and social emotional mental health professionals who are able to support us by um, pointing us in the right direction of a specialist um, intervention, giving us some ideas of what we could try as part of our targeted interventions and working with us to help us make robust referrals, either for um, a specific diagnosis, such as an um, autism spectrum disorder diagnosis or attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder diagnosis, or indeed, if necessary, to make an application for an education and healthcare plan.
This is called the Education and Healthcare Needs Assessment. I'm going to hand it over now to Miss Chikolita, who's going to break down this potential journey into um, its parts and into um, and give you details about the support that we are able to offer our students currently in the school. I'm going to um, detail first the targeted need interventions that we provide in schools right now. One of them is focus and organize. This intervention, as our lovely LSA explained, it is um, happening in the morning and it's supporting our students with focusing and organizational skills. Um, we believe this is very important for most of our students that um, find it difficult in the morning to get into that um, 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 a state of mind. This is school. From now on, I'm going to be focused and organized on my tasks. Um, Chill Club, it is, uh, uh, again, uh, um, an intervention that we provide daily. Uh, it happens at lunchtime. And it provides a necessary buffer between a very busy morning of, of studying and a very busy afternoon of studying. Um, Chill Club is the place where uh, students that have sensory needs can come and find that safe space, often quiet, uh, where we provide sensory support and they can relax, enjoy the lunch, and they can go um, in the afternoon and attend their classes. A Lego Club, it is one that supports socialization, organizing skills, as well as turn taking. This um, after school club um, uh, takes place on Mondays. Um, an important offer is the homework club. This is um, um, uh, happens uh, Thursdays at lunchtime or uh, as an after school club. And the, say, the name says it all. It is a support for our students that find it difficult to um, do their homework. Um, the EEL club is a language acquisition club for our students that do not have English as a first language. And this happens every Wednesday and as a daily offer for students that have uh, issues around their phonological awareness, we have a phonics intervention. Um, this is doubled by a reading intervention for some of our students, um, and um, a reading interventions, again, happen daily. On top of our targeted interventions, we have specialist services. Um, for example, we work with our social, emotional, and mental health partner comes in the school every Thursday. The autism. Every week um, on Thursdays. Um, on top of this offer, we have CAMS referrals. We support with those. We work with ACORN for our um, autism spectrum disorder and um, um, ADHD assessments. And as Ms. Elliot Graves pointed earlier, we have the early intervention team um, and the school. We meet every term and talk about the children and young people um, and their strengths and difficulties um, and what specialist um, support can be used um, Ms. Elliot Graves made uh, reference to um, educational psychologists, to social emotional and mental health specialists. We ask them uh, to discuss a student, and for this, we need your consent. Uh, Ms. Chikolita, I'm so sorry, but at this point, um, are you able to go over the um, Autism Advisory Service and the Elsa Friends Resilience? I think there was a little bit of a lag um, as you were explaining it, and we might have missed it. Thank you. Autism Advisory Service is an intervention um, that is run every Tuesday. Um, this um, uh, provides support for our uh, students that have autism um, and uh, helps them with understanding their condition, understanding um, uh, what ASD means, how impacts them. Um, the support is excellent because uh, it is 
individualized. Every single student um, has a different profile. Uh, we know ASD is vast. Um, ELSA and uh, Friends Resilience uh, grab support with uh, socialization skills and uh, mental uh, issues, um, especially anxiety. And this is a club that we run every Thursday with the support of specialist services. Um, I think we can move on from the specialist services and go and detail a bit what we do in terms of social, emotional, mental health, uh, autism um, and uh, ADHD. Um, and the first port of call, Ms. Elliot Graves uh, pointed uh, in that direction is our quality first teaching. For the students that have ASD, ADHD and social, emotional, mental health, in the classroom, we say the name before instructing. This way, the student focuses on us and can focus on the instruction. Um, we check understanding of tasks. Um, we set a time and step-by-step -step task list. Uh, Ms. Quebeca made reference and Ms. Luther made reference to the importance of having a clear structure in place when um, a student has uh, ADHD, ASD, or social, emotional, and mental health. Um, we offer attention and movement breaks. Our lovely LSAs made reference to that. If the student struggles with paying attention in class and needs a movement break, they can go out um, and walk for a bit and come back in the classroom. We make instructions explicit and concise. The language is simple, so all students can focus on a few words at a time, not a vast number of words. Um, we maintain a calm and quiet environment, which helps us focus on skills, unless we are Miss Luther, who needs noise. And we pre-warn of any changes. It is important for our students to understand that we move, and if it's a big step in what we do, to understand that that is coming and they need to be prepared for it. Um, the next step, the next support that's higher up, if the need is higher in uh, after quality first teaching, it is a school intervention. And as I mentioned, focus and organize is one that we use in this kind of situation. Autism advisory service is another one. Um, we will have from 11th of March, um, um, 16 plus transition project for autism, which I think it is very important for a huge transition in life for our students. Um, the Lego Club, which I explained, it helps with organizational so socializing skills. The Chill Club that offers that sensory relief. Um, the SEMH um, uh, partner that works with social, emotional and mental health issues that our students may have. And it is, again, a very individualized uh, approach, a very individualized intervention. Um, um, we uh, offer a mentoring program, a counseling program, um, um, homework club that supports our students, and the su student success leadership program. Um, if those interventions need to be uh, further uh, refined, I think the best place for us um, as parents to support our um, students and our children is by providing support at home. And we need to understand that in the case of social emotional mental health, um, 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 autism spectrum disorder and ADHD, we need to encourage physical activity. It's one of the most important things that supports our mental health. We need to establish a clear routine. And uh, Ms. Quebeca and Ms. Luther, Ms. Luther um, pointed to the lists and the books and the post-its that we can put in place, as well as uh, whole morning routines. Um, we need to provide clear instructions. Uh, also, we need to prepa prepare at home the students for any changes, especially when we know those changes are important transitioning from normal lessons to mock exams or mock tests. This is one of the preparation that it is very important. On a smaller scale, we need 
to approach any transitions from um, a holiday or um, 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 a half term for some of our ASD students, that is a very important thing to have in place. Um, provide social interaction oppor opportunities for um, our students outside at home. It supports us in school. Um, uh, using positive reinforcement is probably something that all parents do every single day. Encourage independence um, and talk about mental health, ASD and ADHD. Our students need to understand this, um, the challenges, as well as the positives that come with these conditions. I'm going to move now on, on the support that we provide our students with dyslexia. Um, as a quality first teaching, we provide sentence starters, writing frames, and gap fills. Um, this is an important way of building longer narratives, supporting students with their syntax. We add pictures to support understanding, and visual prompts um, are an important um, part of our quality first uh, teaching. Um, we avoid copying. Um, uh, we offer opportunities for ver verbal feedback. Um, uh, um, we provide off-white, yellow-colored background. Um, we have books that are a uh, huge support in um, uh, dyslexia and reading out loud software. Um, as a next step, we have uh, school interventions that support our students with dyslexia. Uh, reading lessons that promote literacy uh, progress uh, uh, dependent on the student's level, homework club again, and dyslexia friendly books. Um, you can find those in libraries and this is how support can start at home and also can be in the form of playing Scrabble, uh, use rhyme and music to reinforce spelling or vocabulary, encourage muscle memory with the use of Montessori boards. This is how we develop that handwriting and fix that mirror uh, writing when um, uh, the B's and D's are uh, 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 not in the right position. Uh, we encourage the use of technology, especially spe speech to text tools. We need to look at uh, in the future. And this is probably where our students will um, uh, not be as much uh, focus as much on handwriting, but on software and how can they can type, they can provide that uh, content without the struggle of spelling words. Um, and also, I believe at home, it's very um, important, and we come back again, to encourage structure and predictable routines. For our students with speech and um, um, communication um, needs, quality first teaching looks like this. We provide um, center starters, writing frames, and filling gaps. You recognize that from dyslexia. It is an ongoing support that you pro we provide in classrooms. We add pictures to provide understanding. Again, um, uh, uh, visual support is essential in um, uh, developing vocabulary, um, giving prompts for longer pieces of writing. We avoid, uh, co uh, we avoid copying uh, opportunities for verbal feedback, uh, off-white, and read-write for read-out-loud. Again, um, the next step um, in support is school interventions, as I mentioned, reading lessons, homework club, chill club, and we'll um, uh, develop our uh, offer of interventions with a book club, which I believe will be hugely popular, and a media club. Uh, this is specific to develop um, oracy, to develop our um, ability to speak, because this is, and uh, research proves it, this is how we um, support speech and language communication needs, by learning how to speak and address one another first. Writing comes after. Um, the support at home that you can provide, and probably some of you um, will laugh when you hear, but putting subtitles on television 
was proven by resource, research to be a huge support in a language acquisition, in a speech and language and communication needs. Uh, hearing and seeing the words on the screen supports hugely with development as um, a speech and uh, language. Um, visiting the lo local library as with dyslexia friendly books, this can be uh, something that um, um, our students can do as a family to discover and um, um, become passionate about the subject. And this way, um, reading and speaking and using language is not going to be a drain for them. It's going to be something exciting. Um, we encourage audio books. Uh, we believe that it is important to listen to words. Having conversation at home, it is a very important way of encouraging um, 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 and developing those skills. Um, playing word games, um, allowing typing and autocorrect, and encouraging a repetition of newly learned words. We will move next to students with English as a second language. Thank you. Quality first teaching. Sorry, um, Miss Chikolita. At this at this point, I just thought I'd um, come in and um, talk a little bit about um, including students with English as an additional language. Um, so, um, as part of our quality first teaching, uh, we make sure that um, we use a lot of pictures in our teaching to support understanding, and these pictures are linked directly to um, what is being explained um, to make sure that um, the um, students don't have to find out everything from scratch, but can really select those words or those phrases or those key concepts that um, they need to um, find out more about or, or even um, translate. For their writing and, and, and for students to build um, on existing knowledge of, of English or whatever level that might be, um, we use sentence starters and writing frames and gap fills so that students can have a reduction of all of the language that they need to take in, keeping pace with the lesson um, and getting all of that knowledge and um, all of the skills that they're going to be learning done. We do prompt students to use Google Translate and online dictionaries for support. These are extremely useful. Every student has a Chromebook and we've got a thesaurus and a dictionary and a um, translation dictionary at our fingertips. So we use them a lot as teachers in our communication with the students, but we do encourage independence. And we do have software such as the Read Write for reading out loud and for speech to text. And that also has um, translation in it. So all the student needs to do is go click on, on the little purple jigsaw puzzle piece at the top of the Chromebook. It will bring out to read and write and then through the settings they can um, select whatever uh, language they need. In school we have a dedicated ESOL teacher who provides lessons um, on a weekly basis to students. We've got uh, an English as Additional Language Club that runs on Wednesdays and uses a lot of drama and creative techniques to facilitate conversational English as well as more high level vocabulary. And as Mrs. Chikolita said, we're going to have the media club, the book club and the film club, all of which with subtitles and in addition to the use of subtitles, are going to be promoting um, our students with EAL to develop their English. At home, it's really important if you're supporting um, your child to focus on covering basic vocabulary first to make sure that um, this is solid and we can build on that in our work in school. To encourage that um, your child talks in our, our answers in full sentences, um, to really make sure that they can use all of the variety of vocabulary, the vocabulary that we need, also so that they are getting a little bit more accustomed to how it is that they're going to need to write in their lessons.
Subtitles on television will also help students with EAL. Um, there's quite a lot of television going on um, here watching. Um, we do encourage audiobooks because um, by listening to audiobooks, um, students do develop vocabulary and do develop literacy, even if they are not reading that themselves. Even better if they can have the text in front of them and track the words as they hear them. Do continue to have conversations and just think about opportunities that your child can have to immerse themselves in the language. Scouts, sports clubs, youth clubs, whatever it is that is um, of interest to them. I think I'm going to um, pass over to Ms Chikalita again uh, for a case study that I believe I am named in. <laughs> Indeed. Um, my case study looks at Leone. Um, she has ASD and uh, speech and language and communication needs. Um, there was a lot of information that we um, uh, went through and I want to have this specific case um, so you will understand exactly how Leone will access learning in our school and how the uh, support will gradually increase with um, her needs. So the first thing that we are going to do is quality first teaching and Leonie will have her name said before instruction. So we know that she pays attention when we talk and uh, start our lesson uh, and develop our, uh, the information throughout the lesson. We will add pictures to support understanding. And this is especially important with uh, the speech and language and communication needs that Leonie has and will make instructions explicit and concise, we will understand that language is a challenge. Um, after that, if um, 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 the next step uh, in um, uh, supporting Leonie in school will be to give uh, Leonie um, a school intervention opportunity to join some school interventions. This take, can take the shape of paired reading, um, um, Lego, which we are more than happy to offer for all those skills like turn taking um, and um, as, uh, organizational and communication skills. Um, this is a small group uh, club. Uh, probably Leone doesn't like Lego and then we can offer chill club. We will try to make this intervention as um, individualized as the student is. Um, maybe the Lego intervention will be best for Leone, but we will um, um, Leonie has a say in what type of intervention they uh, like to join. It needs to work with our students' passions and interests. And then we will ask parents to support at home. And we identified that in Leonie's case, we need to establish a clear routine at home that will support with what we do in school. We need to cover basic vocabulary first uh, because there we identified some gaps. And we put subtitles on television to support that language acquisition and that development of vocabulary. I would like to move next to one of um, our important issues that we identified across the school. Um, Ms. Absolutely. Ms. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ms. Chikalita. I just wanted to say a couple of notes about um, my namesake. Um, and the case study. So um, Leone's journey doesn't capture every child's journey. Of course, every child um, is unique and so will be the support that is offered. But what we've tried to do with this example is to demonstrate how a student might go and, and journey through their quality first teaching, our identification that some additional support might be needed, uh, a, a discussion about what school intervention would be best suited and our effort to support all 
all of the amazing work that um, Leonie's or any student's parents and carers might be doing um, at home. Of course, um, you will have specific questions about what this journey looks like for your child. And we are absolutely expecting and anticipating um, that you will have uh, inquiries to make about that to us. And we are prepared to work with you um, to set each student on the on their right journey for support. Uh, I'm going to let Miss Chikalita come back for the next part that she wanted to discuss with you. Thank you. Um, we know that most um, conditions, um, are disabilities, uh, as well as the pressures of um, transitioning from primary to secondary and um, uh, puberty, life itself presents um, huge pressures for huge pressure for our students and so mental health difficulties and anxiety is something that we encounter on a daily basis it is important to point out that stress is part of life the thoughts have the power to make us feel a certain way um, educating our students in having a positive set of mind it is very important and you as parents at home um, have a huge mission in supporting them with that. Um, we need to pay attention to positive and negative automatic thought patterns and beliefs. Um, more often than not, instead of saying, I can do this, um, uh, we might say, I'm not good enough, or I'm not good at this. Um, I believe that um, you know stress can come from a small uh, things, and for example, and this is probably one of those situations that our students encounter quite often is when they forget a Chromebook. Um, the negative thoughts that that student might have: I always forget it. My teachers will be cross with me, or negative feelings, worried, anxious, hopeless, um, or negative behaviors avoiding going to class, make an excuse for forgetting. But it's important to understand that there is a positivity uh, um, uh, that we can um, teach our children and our students. So positive and realistic thoughts will be, this is annoying, but you know, it's not the end of the world. Um, I will need to write a reminder or a post-it, and this is why we talked about that organizing um, um, uh, things at home as well as in school. Um, positive feelings, um, hopeful. I can make sure this does not happen again. That is a plan and has poly positive impact on our feelings and positive be behaviors. I can plan for this in the future. I we can move on to the next side and I will show you what happens when we inflict that positivity, we, when we teach our students, our children to be positive. This is a story about our inspiring students. This is our student. He knows that every time he goes climbing, his body, especially his legs and back, will hurt a lot. But he sets himself targets. He tells himself, I'm going to see if I can go higher or try a taller wall. Some of our students achieve greatness every day, some by participating during classes, some by just turning up to school, others by making friends and climbing impossible heights despite their physical limitations. They all teach us that our mind can push us beyond our limits, can make us unusually brave, Ms. Elliot Graves? I think Ms. Elliot Graves can help us understand the gradual communication with the uh, inclusion team. Absolutely. So um, your first port of contact with us is to fill out our sent inquiries form. And towards the end of this presentation, I am going to go through exactly how to do that. 
Um, if within um, two or three days you haven't received um, an answer from that or you've got any technical difficulty with it or, or anything else at all, um, you can email Ms. Cooks and Edwards. What's most likely going to be the case is after you send your inquiry through the Send Inquiries form, our um, Ms. Cooks and Edwards is going to email you back with an acknowledgement and then an update on how your inquiry is going. If your inquiry is a little bit more specialist than that or requires a little bit of a deeper or a further discussion, most likely Ms. Chikalita Awasenko is going to um, get in contact with you, but um, you can also use her email to contact her directly. And I'm always uh, uh, available in the foreground or the background to support um, any additional discussions or inquiries um, that we may have. Now, I am going to try and see if I can play uh, Miss Cooks and Edwards' little video, um, hello, that she wanted to show you. Um, just give me one second. Okay, I've put it in my stage. No, that's fine. I'm just going to have to We can um um yeah, and by uh, by talking about the is in oh okay. Oh there you go. Mm -hmm. I'll be the person who will be calling, following up any some inquiries. I'll also be monitoring personal inquiries on a daily basis. And if you do not hear from me within three days, please pop me an email at a cooks and edwards at mixyheapacademy.org and I'll be in contact. Thank you. Fantastic. And now we are just going to bring up um, just the process of completing the send inquiries form. Just give me one moment. I'm sure you are going to be a lot, lot faster with this form than I am right now. Okay. Fantastic. So what you're going to do is you are going to go to onto our website if you want to complete the send inquiries form. You're going to click on our website. You're going to go on to Academy Life, Additional Needs. And then this is going to bring you to our page where you have our key contacts, Ms. Cooks and Edwards, Ms. Chikolita, my email, and Ms. Rebecca's email. And then there's this part where it says the send inquiries. So you're going to click on this form. And that brings you to the form. If you click here um, for your email to be included in your response, then you type your name. This is your name here, not um, your child's name. You click that you are a parent carer, the student name, the student here group. Oh, I've just been told that the form isn't showing. Okay, not a problem.
Okay, so we're back up um, to the screen. So I'm just going to take it from the top again now that uh, you can see it. So this is our um, inquiries form. Here is where you click to make sure that um, your email is sent to us. Here is where you put your name, not your child's name. You can select, obviously, parent carer. And then you can put your student's name, their year group, and the inquiry details. Uh, for example, I would like to know what support Leonie can receive for her spelling and reading. And I know myself that I do require um, support with spelling. Anything that you might have in terms of a um, formal diagnosis, a note from your GP, um, something completed in primary school, something completed outside of school, any professional or any piece of evidence that you'd like to upload, you can upload it as a file from your device. Then you click submit and we receive it together with your details instantly so we are able to answer your inquiries and pick these up and investigate them. Um, as soon as we receive them and we monitor this on a daily basis. So, this brings us to um, the end of our um, second information evening. I would like to especially thank the wonderful students um, who took part in it and obviously our um, learning support assistants and everyone, uh, Miss, Miss Luth and Miss Rebecca and of course our parents and carers who have been listening to us for over an hour now um, and engaging with us on our support uh, for students with uh, special educational needs and English as a traditional language. If possible for Miss Chikolita to just come back to the screen and um, wish everyone a absolutely lovely evening. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support. Thank you so much. Good evening. Thank you.